Hey everyone, welcome to our webinar on headaches and migraines, what causes them and what to do about it. I'm Dr. Trish Lee. Uh, I'm so glad to have you here tonight. Today we're going to be talking about headaches and migraines, obviously, so let's dig right in. Um, okay, so headaches, let's characterize them first and foremost, but not spend too much time here because we need to get to all the good stuff about brain performance patterns, how you can see them, how we know they're associated with headaches, and what to do about them in the end. So what we'll be talking about in this webinar is generalized headaches that are chronic. We'll also talk about tension type headaches, but really we're gonna focus more on chronic headaches because what we'll be seeing is there's an underlying brain performance pattern that creates and then exacerbates headaches. And really we're thinking more chronically, it's not like if you just get a headache every once in a while, even though ultimately you'll probably realize even those are caused by this brain pattern. And we're also talking about migraines with and without aura. And the aura can be either visual aura or auditory aura. So if you fall into any of those categories, this is the webinar for you. Okay, so what causes chronic headaches? This is based on a case study by Donaldson. The reference is down in the right-hand corner. Stress. Stress is the number one thing that is associated with headaches. Now, if you've talked with me before, you have probably heard me say that when people suffer from stress, or really it's when a person has the anxiety or stressy brain pattern, I also call it the brain pattern that's associated with overdrive. I call it overdrive because sometimes it doesn't even feel like stress to people. This brain pattern can be addicting. It can actually feel good or just like the person's lifestyle, but what they don't realize is that they're in a chronic state of stress, which has put their nervous system in chronic fight or flight or hyper vigilant mode. So when people suffer from headaches, it's because their brain is stuck in that mode all the time and they don't even know they're in that mode most of the time. So we'll investigate that a little bit further. But when I talk about stress, I'm talking about excessive high beta. Now I'm going to give you the quick and dirty on high beta, but if you haven't heard me talk about brain speeds and how brain speeds create these brain patterns or brain modes, then please visit my YouTube channel because I am trying to create more and more videos for you all so you can understand how our brains work and how our brains operating modes can create our states, do create our states, and then create the symptoms that we experience if we're struggling with something in our life or challenges in terms of how we're performing mentally and physically. That it rolls out from your brain. Your brain is your hard drive. It's controlling your mind and your body. So back to the speeds. There's five main speeds that our brains use on a daily basis on circadian rhythms to get us into the states that we need to get into across our day and across our life. Number one is delta. It's extra slow speed. It is what keeps you asleep at night. Theta is slow speed. It is what shifts you into sleep into, in the evening. So when you're feeling groggy, your brain's making more slow speed. When you actually fall asleep, it's making more extra slow speed. Medium speed is that speed, it's called alpha, that is associated with the feeling of calm, a calm demeanor. If you've ever hopefully just felt chill and relaxed and you had a quiet mind, yeah, I know many of you might not get into that. That is medium speed alpha. Then there's fast speed, and I always refer to it as perfectly fast, even though it's probably a little bit of a misnomer. But fast speed is when our brain is moving a little bit faster than medium for calm focus. So you're still calm and you're chill, but you are focused and ready to go. And this is called low beta. High beta is what we're talking about here. It's extra fast speed. It's when your brain is cranking away. It is going so fast, it gives you tons of thoughts. It creates hypervigilance, which is you're on red alert looking for things to go wrong. And guess what happens when you're looking for things to go wrong? 
things go wrong, right? You get what you look for. So it creates a lot of anxiety in people. It makes it so that people have sleep problems. It's associated with tinnitus or tinnitus, depending upon how you say it, ringing in the ears or feelings in the head. Okay, so high beta is the main thing that is at the root of headaches. Another thing that most people don't know is that if you've had a mild traumatic head in, traumatic brain injury, a head injury, it decreases the power in your brain. So think concussion or a knock on the head. And this is a true story. I hit my head on the back of my, I drive a Suburban, and it was two Halloweens ago, and I had opened the back of the Suburban to get all my goodies from grocery shopping out because I was excited to take all of my five lovely little children out trick-or-treating. And I came, I opened the garage door and I came under the garage door into the corner of my Suburban. And I knew it was, a, you know, it didn't rock my world, but doing what I do, I knew that it probably affected the way my brain was performing. I could have totally gone trick-or-treating. And if I wasn't in this line of work, I would have, but I didn't, I took it easy. I just sat on the porch that year. The next day I went to work. I performed a QEEG brain map on myself and indeed, the power in my brain was running low. It looks like blue on a QEEG brain map. So what people don't know is if you struggle with a lot of headaches, you may have had a knock to the head that was seemingly not that big of a deal, but it permanently knocked the power in your brain a little low. It can be a lot low, but it can just be a little low. And what that means is your brain has low power. An analogy that I use is if your controller to change the channels on your TV. If the battery is running low power, sometimes the channel changes, sometimes it doesn't. Its power isn't fully there. That can be happening in your brain. Then when you go to think and focus and produce and work or go to school, what happens is your brain has to kick it into extra high, high beta to offset this low power. And so then your brain inherently is producing more high beta because it's going against this low power pattern. So this is known to be associated with headaches. Another thing is muscle tension in the neck, in the jaw, in the head, in the upper shoulders and back. And what that does is it creates a perpetual negative feedback loop. So muscle tension is known to be caused by high beta. Then when you have more high beta, it causes more muscle tension. The more tense your muscles become, the more apt you're able to get a neck ache or a headache. So it's a, your quintessential negative feedback loop that keeps going and going and going, perpetuating headaches long-term chronically. Okay, those are the three main underlying issues under headaches. Now let's look at migraine headaches. There's an underlying brain pattern. It's, uh, it involves high beta, and we're gonna look at that in just a minute, but migraines can be familial in nature. And, you know, people ask me all the time, is this genetic? Is it hereditary? I call it familial because it's not that it's carried in your genes. It's that brains don't fall far from the tree. So your brain pattern is very similar to one or both of your parents' brain patterns, which means if they suffered from headaches because they had this underlying brain pattern, then you are likely to suffer from headaches too. And even though this is probably not the time and place for it, I would like to remind you all that Epigenetics, uh, a body of research in an area of looking at healthcare, which means above genes, epigenetics, shows that the way you live your life can change it so something that you have a familial predisposition to doesn't impact you. And honestly, I'm living proof of that. Hopefully none of my family is on this webinar because our brain patterns are very different. But as I've lived my life on a journey of self-development and personal development and brain health and professional development. I've morphed my brain into a different looking brain than my five, five siblings and my parents. That's epigenetics. I've created a different brain pattern from that of my family. So these patterns, this familial pattern can be exacerbated by, you guessed it, stress. So stress increases high beta even more, fatigue, lowers power and increases that extra slow speed. Head injury lowers the power and seizure activity means that the brain has a chaotic brain pattern that is not organized and not stabilized, which puts a person more at risk for headaches 
also. And that's a study by Habib et al, which the reference is there for you also. So we see there's a brain pattern that's associated with headaches and migraines. Migraines themselves, the pattern, so this, the pattern is associated with three main areas. Let me finish the thought first. And there's the research reference there for you. The frontal area in the front aspect of the brain, the temporal lobes are on the side near the ears and in the very back is the occipital lobe. So there are studies that show those three areas are most impacted by migraines. This picture is one of the 1020 system, which is an international system that brain professionals use to be able to communicate about the areas of the brain and how they're performing. And so what we see on this is that there's circles for every, every area, the Fs are for the frontal lobe, C is for central area, T for the temporal lobe, P is for the posterior parietal lobe, occipital's way in the back. And these little bubbles show you that every area of the brain has been mapped by neuroscientists so that we now know what the job or the skill or ability that that area of the brain performs. So in the frontal lobe, we have sustained attention, executive function, which is planning and organization, impulse control and judgment. Moving back, we have the sensory motor cortex, which is sensory processing and integration, motor planning for movement. As we move even further back into the P's, we have verbal cognitive processing and mathematical cognitive processing. In the way back in the occipital lobes, we have visual processing. In the sides, the temporal lobes are strong areas for emotional regulation, and you can read the rest of the bubbles, but you get the point. The areas control the skills. So depending upon the area that's impacted by the brain pattern of too much high beta, essentially, that will give you not only headaches, but other symptoms as well. So the irregular brain pattern that is associated with headaches is, like I've already told you, high beta is much too much extra fast speed, and there's also too much slow speed. And like I, like I said to you in one of the last slides, that's why fatigue can affect headaches so much also. So on this QEEG brain map, what we see on the top row is the five brain speeds, delta, theta, alpha, beta, and high beta. And when you can see the legend at the bottom, gray is optimal performance. Green to yellow to orange to red is one to two to three levels too high. The blues are one to two to three levels too low. And in the top row, we can see that not only is beta and high beta excessively high in the frontal lobes moving back, we also see that delta, extra slow speed, that which is associated with sleep, your brain's going really slow, is excessively high three times or more in the frontal lobes and along the temporal moving into the occipital, just like we see in the study that shows the pattern and the areas that are associated with migraine headaches. So this can be focal or generalized. This example is kind of one that is focally generalized or uh, generalizably focal, focal, whichever way you look at it, but the high beta pattern is pretty global or generalized across the whole brain. We see a pretty general pattern in Delta, but you can see it's definitely focally involving those areas as well. Okay, so migraine headaches resting state pattern. Now this I think is so interesting um, using MRI, fMRI of the brain we can see that we're looking at, a, in these images, we are looking across the different frequencies. So when I was just talking about delta to high beta, delta is at a frequency of one to four hertz, super slow, so slow. Theta is five to seven, a little faster. Alpha's in the 12 range, low beta is in the 15 range. High beta can be anywhere from usually like, you know, 21 hertz, so in this image, what I wanna show you is you can see the left-hand images are migraine sufferers. The right-hand image is a control. And the red is where the area of the brain is using excessively fast speed. So you can see in the control, the brain is functioning in an optimal state. In the migraine sufferer, where the green arrows are pointing out, there's excessive use, and this example is in the temporal lobes primarily, 
excessive use of 55 to 90 hertz. That is very fast brain speed. And you can see it here as those red pockets that the green, arrow, green arrows point at. There's also excessive use of 90 to 200 hertz. So it's very interesting because this is a brain that's supposed to be at resting state. At resting state, you should be using primarily alpha. There should be no pockets of very fast brain speed being used. And there's studies that prove when the brain is at rest, it is stuck in this super fast, hypervigilant overdrive anxiety pattern. So the key to getting rid of headaches is to get rid of this extra fast brain speed pattern. And you can see here the sites that are impacted are, are this is from the study that is referenced in the right hand corner, the lateral frontal cortex, which is towards the front, but here frontal and the side near the, the temporal where the frontal meets the temporal lobes. Okay, so we're talking about neurofeedback as the solution for headaches because it is basically the only thing that will teach your brain to make less of this extra fast speed and more of perfect processing speed in the middle using more alpha and low beta and really toning down the use of high beta. So there's a study by Walker, which of course I think is awesome, where all patients showed an excessive high beta in 21 to 30 hertz. So not as fast as we saw in the last study, but still fast. And it was in four main cortical areas, including the frontal, the central, and the parietal. So we know from the last study that it basically it can cover any area of the brain because the last study showed temporal and occipital also. Now, the cool findings of this study, and if you look it up, you can read a lot more information, is that all but one of the neurofeedback patients had a significant decrease in headache symptoms. 54%, and that's huge. If you know anything about research studies, 54% of the patients had complete cessation of symptoms. That means all their headaches went away. Cessation means stop. All their symptoms stopped. And they, they also had a decrease in frequency. So 54%, more than half, had their symptoms go away completely. And the others had a serious decrease in the frequency and the intensity, which I didn't write on here, of their headache symptoms for just 30 minute sessions. We operate 30 minute sessions in my office at Lee Brain and Spine. Most neurofeedback practitioners also offer 30 minute sessions because on this webinar will be people from across the globe actually um, these days because I'm working with a few neurofeedback companies that offer systems across the world. So most sessions are 30 minutes in nature. The neurofeedback protocols that your practitioner will most likely use, but of course they have to do a QEEG brain map to see exactly what your brain needs, but most likely will be decreasing high beta and increasing alpha medium calm speed to calm the brain out, get it out of this hypervigilant mode and get rid of the headaches. And on your QEG brain map, if there is a hotspot, like we saw on that MRI, the left and the right side of the brain, there's other studies that show there's more specific protocols so that those hemispheres can be addressed individually and your practitioner will know how to do that. And of course at Lee Brain Spine, we know exactly what to do for that. Okay, so you should have a QEG brain map if you wanna know if your brain is stuck in this excessive high beta mode and which areas of the brain are impacted the most. You'll be able to see it with your own eyes. Once you see it, then you will know what your brain needs to be able to decrease the high beta, increase the alpha or whatever else you might need so that your headaches go away and you can feel and perform better. Okay, so let me show you how we know when, as a neurofeedback practitioner, if you join us for care at Lee Brain, or, Lee Brain and Spine, if you go to your local neurofeedback experts office, what you wanna look for on the graphs is a decrease in high beta, where on this graph that is characterized by the yellow lines, there's a solid yellow for the left-hand side of the brain and a dashed yellow for the right-hand side. We wanna see that go down and you can see there's a gentle downward curve 
in this session's graph. And you can also see that the blue line, alpha, is gently increasing across the session. So alpha is higher at the end than high beta, which has been reduced. This is a beautiful response to intervention in a session, decreasing high beta, increasing alpha. Hopefully you can see that. On this next one, this is a little trickier because high beta is excessively high on this graph. You can see that it starts high and it gets even higher. And this might be a person who feels anxious and really has difficulty controlling anxiety and also just really feels like they have headaches a lot. When this yellow line is so high like that, that would be a time where your brain is more chaotic, thinking about that seizure pattern. With the lines higher and kind of more all over the place, that's more of a chaotic brain pattern. But you can see at 15 minutes into the session, that pattern chills out, high beta comes down significantly under alpha now, and there's 10 minutes of a more optimal pattern that is seen in this session trend graph. This is a graph of a session over time. That's time on the bottom, 30 minutes. This is how this person's brain performed and responded to neurofeedback in real time. This is the data your practitioner will be able to see and know if neurofeedback is working for you. People ask me all the time, how do I know if neurofeedback will work for me? And there's a video on it in my YouTube channel in one of the playlists. It's under neurofeedback Q&A. But the way that you can know is you have a brain pattern that's associated with the science for the symptoms that you have. And from your first session, you can see a beautiful response to training with a change in your graph. So here we see a regulated pattern for 10 minutes. And then unfortunately, when we see it rising again like that, that indicates fatigue of the brain. So what that means is, your brain was able to work its way down after 15 minutes, stay there for 10, but then it got tired of holding the more optimal pattern. And of course your practitioner will know how to work you up to a full 30 minute session with your brain in the lower, more neurologically regulated pattern so you feel and perform better. Okay, last, uh, let me move my head here. Last slide for us together, thinking about headaches and migraines. And I want to explain to you how neurofeedback can create permanent change. And there's science that proves that what I'm about to tell you is true and that I am just the messenger. What we do when we use neurofeedback as the catalyst to change your brain pattern is we shift your brain pattern out of a negative irregular brain pattern that's associated with the science that is causing your symptoms. So if you're using the brain pattern that's giving you headaches. It's one of the stress and anxiety pattern. You might have had a head injury that's also making it worse. And you might have the slow pattern too. That's the one that's associated with either ADHD or with fatigue and burnout and overwhelm. So if you have those patterns together, especially, what that will give you is headaches. When you have headaches, you have negative outcomes. You can't go to school or work. You feel terrible. Your productivity is decreased. That is the essence of a negative feedback loop. Your negative brain pattern gets you negative behaviors, which gets you negative outcomes. Neuroplasticity basically says the more you use this pattern, the more it's hardwiring itself in, in your brain. The way neurofeedback works is it starts to shift you out of this pattern. It doesn't even have to get you all the way. When it starts to shift you out of the negative pattern, and you begin to use a more positive pattern. So you're using, the example of the last graph is a perfect one. For 10 minutes, you use the optimal pattern. Now you're going to have less of a headache. You're gonna be able to get more work done or socialize more, which is going to feel good to you. You're going to be able to build your relationships with your friends, have more enjoyment, have more energy, get more done, feel more confident. Hebb's law, which is scientific law, that neuroplasticity is based upon says the more you use this positive pattern, the more it will hardwire itself in and basically grow the weeds over the old pattern that was causing your headaches. So our job as neurofeedback practitioners is to shift your brain from the negative feedback loop into the positive feedback loop. Your job is to make sure you're, you reward yourself we call it the small wins at Lee Brain and Spine. Reward yourself for the better behaviors 
by celebrating the positive outcomes that you get. So if you get to go to the park and take a walk with your friend and you weren't able to do that before, you revel in the enjoyment of that. Or sometimes if you get a big project done at work that you would not have been able to do before, you buy yourself a new pair of shoes. That's my classic example. My parents have always teased me, and I'm sure you can appreciate this. They say that my husband, Cosmos, Dr. Cosmos Lee and I, will celebrate anything, even a new pair of shoes. And I'm like, yeah, we will, because every time we celebrate our wins, it propels me into more wins. So every time I get something right, I high five myself if I can't find somebody to high five with me. And I celebrate that win, I revel in it for just a second, even the small things. And that propels me to get more done. And it literally locks my good brain pattern in. And that's what it will do for you. And I actually was working with a couple and they bought themselves a new pair of shoes each. And I thought that was really cute. I loved it. So the goal is to create a positive feedback loop. And then the way that that creates permanent change is the more you use that pattern, even when you're done with neurofeedback, it will keep wiring itself in for continual long-term positive change which is super exciting. Okay, if you want more information, uh, even if you're not from my town or my community, you can go to my website at leebrainandspine.com. There's lots of information there on headaches and on QEG brain mapping and on neurofeedback services. If you're working with your neurofeedback expert, they can give you tons of information also. And then I've created my own website, drtrishlee.com, where I don't have to worry about our licenses and what I say because it's just an educational, fun, informational website that provides on the blog lots of lifestyle tips and techniques. There's a blog, there's two blog posts there right now on headaches and what you can do to tone down the headache and migraine pattern is one of them. And the other one is the relationship of ADHD to headaches and some tips for you to use. So you can go to drtrishlee.com and get lots more information on headaches and migraines. Thank you for joining me. I really appreciate your time. I know it's one of the, at least for me, one of the resources that I have the least of. So I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I hope this information has helped you. Have a great day. Thanks.